Hello folks! So far we've talked about gathering water, filtering water, distilling water, storing water, and heating water in order to survive a long-term disaster in suburbia. But now we are going to talk about using water. We all think about needing water to drink, but we don't always consider having water to stay clean and to go to the bathroom. One has to remember that pumps are used to bring you water, but pumps are also used to take your sewage away. They both require electricity to operate. It is true that for a given time, water will go down the sink and your toilet will continue to flush. But at a certain point, they won't. The sewage system will back up. And as a worst case scenario, if you live at a lower level or a lower grade than your neighbors, their sewage may back up into your home. Not a very pleasant thought. In the second video, we will focus on what to do about the toilet. Now, I don't claim to have all the answers, but hopefully it will give you a place to start, and hopefully other YouTube folks will chime in with suggestions. So, first you need a place to go. Most texts I've read recommend placing an outhouse 200 to 300 feet away from any food or water source and at least 6 feet down. In suburbia, this puts me a couple houses down the block, not something my neighbor is going to appreciate. I also don't want to be going outside in the middle of winter to go find an odd house. So let's start simple with where to go, how to get clean, and then finally what to do with it. Where to go? Here are a couple of simple options. I am showing a porta potty in the center and a luggable loo on the left, which is basically just a lid on top of a five gallon bucket. You can buy the lid independent of the bucket uh, if you already have additional buckets lying around. The lids are very important in both cases. They help keep down smell between uses and help keep bugs out. For your porta potty, you can also line it and the bucket with plastic bags. They do make purpose built ones that are sized for a five gallon bucket. The bags definitely make cleanup and disposal easier, but eventually you may run out. But while you do have them, you can also seal the bags with a large chip clip that's a little white clip across the black plastic bag and that will also, in addition to the lid, be another way of keeping down smell and bug infestations. As a note, the buckets do tend to be short in comparison with your average toilet, so you may want to find some bricks or some paving stones to put underneath them in order to raise the height to something that you're used to. Also, I have an extra bucket there on the right hand side. You'll discover that you will need additional buckets for your new bathroom. One of the reasons you need them is you need to keep down smell between uses. Now you can get the enzyme packs, that's that little blue bag there on the left hand side, but those may eventually run out. So some alternative ways of keeping the smell down are sprinkling in kitty litter after use or sand or ashes from your fireplace and there are additional ways as well if you look them up on the internet. Now let's focus on getting clean. Obviously folks say stock up on toilet paper but what do you do if you run out of toilet paper and you run out of all other substitutes such as the old Sears catalog? Well a lot of the world gets by with a bucket of water in their hand but I really don't want to go there. So here's what I've come up with as a proposed solution on top of the blue bucket to the right. First, a small squeeze bottle full of water to use as a bidet to get you as clean as possible first. Then use cloth baby wipes to remove anything else. You save the cloth wipe and clean it the same way you would clean cloth diapers. You need a second bucket to store these after use and before cleaning. If someone has a good way of cleaning cloth diapers, I am very interested as I see this as a very unpleasant task. Laundry is still on my to-do list of things to figure out. You can buy the cloth wipes on Amazon, or you can make them out of an old flannel sheet by cutting it in 8 inch by 4 inch pieces and sewing a zigzag pattern around the edges. The other advice I read was to make sure that the sheet is natural fibers as synthetics can hold the smell. So now you have a place to go and a way to get clean, but you still have a bag of waste to get rid of. Here is where you need to get to know your neighbors. Find a communal spot, such as a median strip, where you can all dump your waste. Yes, it will fill up quicker, but digging a six foot hole goes quicker if you have people to help. 
Also, if you are using those plastic bags, you need to dump it out of the bag or poke some holes in it before you put it in the hole so it will degrade. Sealing it in a plastic bag will prevent this. So, in summary, we ended up needing three buckets for this solution. One for our luggable loo, one for our cloth toilet paper after use, and one full of sand, ashes, or cat litter, or some other substance to absorb liquid and keep down the smell between uses. Well, I know this video probably didn't answer all the questions, but hopefully it at least answered some and gets people thinking. If you have some of those answers that I am missing, please provide them in the comments section. As always, thanks for watching, and please subscribe.